Today I want to talk to you guys about one of the four cognitive advantages of dyslexia, the superintelligence of material reasoning. Yo, what up YouTube? My name is Nishantha. Welcome to Hack ADHD and Dyslexia. This series is all about hacking our ADHD and dyslexia to take advantage of our cognitive strengths. So a couple of weeks ago I put up this video on the biological mechanism of dyslexia. And in that video, I mentioned that there was four cognitive, cognitive strengths that you get as a result of having a brain that's wired to be dyslexic. I want to kind of go over the first of the four strengths today. And the first one is called material reasoning. So M strengths or material reasoning strengths are abilities that let us reason about the physical or material world. Now, people with really strong M strengths or material reasoning strengths excel in, in the creation of connected series of mental perspectives that are 3D in nature. So it's kind of like having a, a 3D mental environment inside your head. Kind of like in Star Trek, the holodeck. The people on the spaceship will type in the environment and then this room will get populated with all the ideas the simulation will run, right? So there are two key components of having exceptional M strength. So the first is a imagery system that is able to accurately store and display spatial information in a reliable way. The second skill is the ability to manipulate these spatial environments and objects and ideas by you know rotating, moving, repositioning, and removing and adding other things in and also by being able to make these 3D environments and spatial objects interact with other 3D objects and uh, ideas. Now, scientists believe that this specialized ability to manipulate and interact with these spatial environments is due to a cell that is in a larger number in dyslexic people in the, in the hippocampus area of our brain. Now the hippocampus is the part of our brain that deals with memory retrieval and storage. There are some specialized cells in the hippocampus of dyslexics that help store spatial information much better and this type of cell is also really good at processing spatial information. These types of cells help create a spatial matrix inside dyslexic brains. So this mental matrix allowed them to store spatial information and process spatial information much better than average people. And this allows them to be much more efficient at manipulating spatial ideas and also storing and retrieving spatial ideas and objects. And it's not just images. It could be ideas, concepts, people, conversations. All of these things can be stored in a spatial matrix. So this mental matrix allows dyslexic brains to store information like a, uh, like a 3D GPS. And later on when they retrieve and manipulate that uh, information, it's much more available to them. So that gives them a huge cognitive advantage. So there are some trade-offs to being really strong in the way of M strengths, right? There are, there are some trade-offs to being really developed in our material reasoning abilities. And there are mainly two of them. The first one is people with really strong M strengths, dyslexics with really strong M strengths, struggle with symbolic language, when they're, especially when they're reading. The letters, like the letter B and D and P and Q, is really hard for us to process because they already look like each other, right? So in our brain, we have a natural ability to kind of turn and rotate and manipulate this. So when we're reading, sometimes according to what we're reading, our brains automatically just rotate and flip and invert the symbols. So when we're reading, it's, it's kind of hard to capture those mistakes. It takes a lot of energy to capture those mistakes because that happens so frequently. Our brains are really naturally already flipping and turning and 
manipulating all types of visual ideas. So when we see a B and a D and a Q and a P, well, they all kind of kind of look like that if you rotate, right? So it makes it hard for us to um, interpret symbolic language. Second thing we struggle with is ease of language output, which basically means that sometimes when we we are uh, we are verbally speaking, we use one word when we mean another word, especially if those two words are very similar in meaning or in the way that it's spelled, right? So, the, the, so some of those words could be something like the difference between like extrinsic motivation versus intrinsic motivation. They kind of sound the same, they have a similar uh, meaning kind of, they are in the same category of concept. So we have kind of a little bit of issues with when we're speaking to someone, picking the right one. People with really strong M strengths make really good designers and good engineers, great engineers. Dyslexics are much more overrepresented in graduates programs that are in, in that deal with design and engineering than the, the normal population of people. Matter of fact, at MIT, probably the best university for design and engineering, um, having dyslexia so common that it's called the MIT disorder. The person that I like to think of when I think of a person with a really strong M strength, someone that kind of embodies this idea is Tony Stark from Iron Man. Watch any of the Iron Man movies, uh, you will kind of get to see how this guy thinks. This dude is completely oriented towards visual processing of information. All right, I want to kind of give you like a, like a little exercise that you can do to get an idea of what people with M strengths are able to do and maybe you can do this yourself right so so follow along as um, I'm talking I want you to close your eyes and imagine yourself walking into your house open the door as you're walking in I want you to look up in the ceiling look straight ahead look down do you see your house walk into the kitchen okay now open up the cabinet and grab a cup take that cup and go to the fridge and fill it up with some ice. Then go to the sink and fill it up with water. Take the cup, hold it in your hand, and walk into your bedroom. Do you see your bed? Look for a table. Put your cup on the table. Now walk into the bathroom. Now, if you've been living at your house for a while, that exercise would have been pretty easy for you. You would have been able to visualize your house. You have a pretty good map of what that looks like in your head. Now, a person with really good M strengths, maybe like a, a, a dyslexic architect, can actually do that same exercise with that amount of precision and fidelity with a house that hasn't even been built yet. They can actually build the house inside their head walk around, go to the kitchen, grab a cup, walk up to the bedroom, put the cup down. They can do that exercise to a house that hasn't been even built yet. They can walk into two different houses, take those houses and combine them, and then build that third house that has, doesn't exist, right? That is just an example of um, what really strong M strengths kind of look like. So if you're a person with strong M strengths, you're gonna be struggling with reading and not being able to say the exact right word or mixing up your words sometimes. But that's a pretty good trade-off to what you can develop your brain to be able to do. If you just keep practicing by doing visualization activities and exercises and trying to combine different products with other products or trying to come up with creative ways to manipulate objects or visualizing certain things in your head, your brain will naturally get better at it because you're, you're kind of naturally good at this. And eventually you'll be able to do something that normal people don't have access to. And that makes you really special. That makes your brain really unique. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoy this. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If this is your first time here, I'd love for you guys to subscribe. If you like this video, you can hit the like button to support the channel. And let me know your thoughts on the comment section. Thanks again. See you next time.